T.W. You mad. F. T. W. Broadcasting here for the win, working in tandem with the TGN League. What's going on, everybody? It's AWOL, and joining me on the cast is my crew. I got MBD, I got KOT. MBD, how you doing, sir? I'm doing excellent today, and uh, we're right now we're looking at the top lane. We're looking at Dreamy Ant playing free win Lee Sin, popping down to the mid. We've got Siaya, Siaya playing Fizz. Sure. I know you love the Fizz there, King of Town. In the jungle, we've got Ghost 510. Okay, playing Nautilus in the jungle. Down the bottom, we've got uh, the lane of Taser with Ezreal as the AD and AX3 as Janna on the support. Very nice. And, uh, KOT, is, are you rooting for the blue team this game? They got this hot rod blitz here. What's going on with your blue team? I gotta say, I'm always rooting for the team with Fizz on it, but I will give lip service to the blue team. Noble Frog here playing his blitz, as always, a game changer in the bottom lane. Um, he just changes the way you have to play. Fei Long with the Mafia um, Grave skin here. Love that skin. Absolutely beautiful. Then we have uh, Futurama up here. Um, this should be an interesting matchup. Anytime Fizz has to play ranged, it's always interesting. And then in the very top, we have Jax, a very strong pick currently playing against Lee. Free win Lee Sin. This should be an excellent match altogether. So definitely some interesting matchups. And let's not let's give some love to our double buff Nocturne in the woods. A wild Mimo. He was sort of going uh, incognito there a moment ago. He's going to be jungling uh, for the blue team. It looks like there's a gank top right now. Nautilus connecting with that dredge line on that Jax in the top lane. Unable to get the Jax. Jax just was not out of position enough for him to secure that one. Look at that Nautilus being persistent though, guys. This is what I'm seeing in early game ganks. You, you play like you're leaving and then you come back immediately uh, to prey on players that think they have a false sense of security. Oh yeah, that's gonna be Jack's gonna be hard for him to deal with though. As you saw, he just jumped away. So oh, there's the first blood that we missed. Very nice on us. Very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, now nah, I can't rewind it back since all three of us there. We missed the first blood with Graves in the bottom lane. We suck. No big surprise there, considering Graves and Blitzcrank in the bottom lane. Just absolutely not a big surprise to see them get first blood. Uh, between Blitz's ability to just put people in a, in a great position for Graves to. Burst him down, something that not a lot of ADs can do early level. And here we have hey, the gank on the mill from Nautilus. Yes, indeed, the Zareth in a tough spot, just moving back. The dredge line just completely missing there. Double buff, Nautilus, ineffective on that gank. I'm sorry, you were saying about the bottom lane matchup? Oh, it just, again, not surprising. Uh, Graves has that ability to, to do some burst damage in some early levels with his, with his shotgun blast there, with his uh, buckshot. Right. And... Uh, it's, uh, the, Gra the Graves, uh, Blitzcrank lane is a very aggressive lane, and they actually have a decent counter. The Ezreal Janna lane is a very, pa kind of a passive lane, and it's actually the kind of way you want to play against a lane like that with the Blitz, but just an unfortunate situation that happened, and you don't, you hate to see the support dying early like that, but we'll see exactly how they can turn it around. Fair enough. Let's talk about this mid matchup, then. How do you feel about Xeroth versus Fizz? I mean, Xeroth obvi obviously has the range advantage here. Is that going to stunt Fizz's farm? Um, that really depends on how Fizz plays. If he's good, if he's if he's good at farming, then he can definitely capitalize on circumstances like this, where he can use his troll pole, uh, really just chain his combos to, to farm up. And if you if he if you don't feed as a Fizz and you're allowed to farm a little bit, then uh, being behind a little Nautilus flashing in in the bottom. I, th I thought they were going to get away, but Nautilus flashed in into the dredge line. This hot rod blitz crank goes down. Graves forced to pull back to the tower. Another effective gank there by Nautilus. Very very nice. That was very impressive coming in there. I thought there was going to be nothing happening there, too. I thought it was just a simple, they're going to get away. But the flash into the dredge line was excellent into the pop-up. Very, very nice combo. Yeah, it was great. Nice, nice effective gank there from Nautilus. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Junglers are the most important member of any team. They control the action. They control the ganks. They control the jungle. They control the river. They control it all. Yeah, I... It's I. It's hard to uh, deny that that they are m the most important, but uh, I think everyone's got, definitely got a role to play. But they definitely drive that action. That's for sure. Yes, indeed. And from I, a commentator, I, from a commentator's perspective, it's always exciting to see that jungle move in. I'm sorry. Go ahead, KOT. Well, I was just going to point out they, they they set the pace. I don't know that they're necessarily the most important. It really depends on how they play. But they definitely set the pace for the other lanes. If you don't have a jungle, if you don't. If your jungler is not ganking and theirs is, you're going to have a bad time. Just to clarify at the beginning of this commentary, this is a high elo featured match. If you guys are wondering what this is, this is one of the featured games from the main navigation. I see this blitz in the bushes down here. Oh, sneaky Looks, blitz. Sneaky blitz coming in. Uh-oh, as it will, might get caught out of position here. As does have Ez's flash. So Ez should be fine. Backing up there, that that uh, with the flash, 
unable to connect with the grab there, and in the top lane, Lee Sin came in, just did a, it was a little back and forth in the top lane, nothing much happened there. Looks like Fizz was interested in a gank or something in the bottom lane, but deciding to pull back. Well, the, uh, the action stopped, so he pulled back. Um, got credit to the Jana there with another really well-placed tornado. Oh, wow. Jax got rock-a-sized in the top lane. The the Nocturne came in in just the last moment there to try to save Jax in the top lane, but Lee Sin straight up soloed him and took him down. Now this Nocturne is getting straight up dove right now. Lee Sin connecting with the kick. Oh, and the kick bringing him right outside of tower range for a freaking genius Q right there. That was very nice by Lee Sin. It was a very, very nice shot and uh, <laughs> a well-deserved kill. Uh, much credit to this Nautilus right here. He's where he needs to be. He's doing everything he needs. He is in a rough spot here, though, as he tries to get this blue when he's uh, warded. It is warded. Zarath going to move in here and start just poking him oh, a little sneaky, bit. Oh, sneaky. Sneaky steal. Uh, here it comes. Yes. Oh, nope. He changed his mind. Oh, here comes this <laughs> mind. <laughs> Nothing sneaky about that. That was just straight up killing him. Oh, the shark dropping on that Zarath, though. He's doomed. Very nice. Now is Fizz going to be the end up be the one to end up get this blue? Will Jax jump in and jack it? No, Jax, too late on that. Too late. Now Lee Sin there, kicking in, getting super aggressive. I didn't. I did not expect Lee Sin to move in on this situation. I thought he was just there on the protect. You do not want to go heads up against a Nocturne and a Jax right now, especially early game. They can just do too much damage early game. Even even if you're Lee Sin, is Fizz gonna turn this thing around? Is Fizz gonna be the hero here? Double kill. Fizz E can get out with 70 HP. That was freaking epic. Wow, wow. <laughs> I, I think uh, Lee Sin went in there probably just feeling a little uh, overconfident. I don't think he knew Nocturne was there, or maybe he didn't think Nocturne was there, but Fizz surprising me there with pulling it around, even without his ultimate. Oh my. Didn't need it, had the troll pull. Does, does the percentile damage also has a dot? Just all in all, very devastating situations like that. Just can do, just lay down tons of damage, and also... The King of Town really likes Fizz. Love Fizz. Such a, such a great champ. <laughs> He's alright. Yeah, Fizz is I. Fizz is I. All right. <laughs> now red team is up by three kills. They are up by eh, thirteen hundred gold. Eh, they're looking okay. What's up with this Blitz crank in the bush down there? He's sitting right on the edge of the bush, but he wasn't quite hidden. Um, oh well. You know this Blitz crank is unable to get these like clutch grabs right here because of the ward at the top of the bush. And this is sort of a rare situation. Normally you see Janas control the bush, and uh, this is one of those rare situations where she's not. Generally because she can just send the tornado down the bushes, but Blitzcrank is making the smart decision not to live in those bushes and just to kind of roam around. Nautilus coming in for another gank in the top lane, though. Oh my, do you think he's going to pull this one down too? This Nautilus has been clutch. Oh, that heal was clutch there, but he pulls him in with the uh, the dredge line, and now uh, he's going to pull a ray there. Oh, that was almost a really nice grab by Blitzcrank. I'm surprised it actually didn't <laughs> grab the Nautilus there. Yeah, where did what happened there? It, it got I don't know. Crazy. I think there might have been a creep like right underneath Nautilus that got hit. Uh, Nautilus has been clutch with that. Just he just comes running in straight ahead. Like, he's not coming around the bush or anything. He's just like straight up here I come. Yeah, he's not playing around at all. Fizz now headed towards the mid. Okay, we haven't taught we haven't analyzed this uh, top matchup between Lee Sin and Jax. I got, or I gotta say, this is becoming one of the most common matches matchups in the top lane. Who do you guys feel like is stronger in uh, solo top? In this situation, I think totally based on the player. More off, and more often than not, I'm gonna give it to Lee Sin. Really? Gonna give it to Lee Sin? Kot, what do you think about that? Well, Lee Sin's skill set just gives him a lot more options in terms of how, when, and where he would like to engage. He uh, is still obviously very tanky, like Jack. Still does just a buck ton of damage. It's just very, very capable and. Uh, all in all, in almost any matchup, I would give it to Lee Sin, to be perfectly honest. He's an extremely tr strong champ uh, in the hands of a strong player. I'm going to agree with you guys that Lee Sin is better for your team, generally, with most comps. But I'm, what I'm going to say about that is Jax is definitely a better duelist. And if Jax can um, get that Lee Sin out of position and win in a dueling situation in the top lane, um, he can start to pull ahead. But... Jax, Jax is good with certain comps, as long as you have a really, really strong initiator with some strong CC, Jax makes a better follow-up than Lee Sin in those situations. But overall utility, I totally agree, guys. Lee Sin, Lee Sin superior. Yeah, I, I would say Jax is, I would prefer Jax in the jungle to, to the top lane. Oh myself. my gosh, Jax getting killed there by Lee Sin, even with Nocturne's help. I mean, just to disprove my point, right, as a duelist, this Lee Sin is destroying this Jax as a duelist. Now this Nautilus coming in. Oh god, every time Nocturne tries to come in and help, that he's getting killed. That darkness is not working out. <laughs> and Nocturne is having a rough game. 
a rough, rough game. What is he sitting? He's one in, one in three. That is not the situation you want to be in. Jack's also zero in three. Rough, rough times here. Uh, Lee Sin three and one, and that's the Lee Sin snowballs like nobody's business. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh and man, that, that Zara set up shop there. You Ooh. saw he, he turreted up to try to harass the Fizz. As Nautilus was coming in, his map awareness was poor because he was setting up shop while he had vision of that Nautilus, just yielding more dominant Nautilus play. Yeah, the Nautilus is he's where he needs to be all the time, it seems. He's having the exact opposite game of the Nocturne. Right, right. That's a great point. I love Nautilus. I actually I play him a little weird. I like to play him as a support in the bottom lane because mostly that's what I like to play is support in the bottom lane. But he's he's t certainly a very strong jungler. He is a very strong jungler. Uh, Kot, would you put Nautilus up there in your top three, top five junglers um, for high elo play right now? That's tough to say. It really, really, what jungler you have, really, what jungle you want is really going to depend on the the comp of the rest of your team. Um, so I would say that with with the current meta the way it is and just the the champs that you typically see picked at the top elos, he is very very strong. I would probably put him in my top three. Yes, top three. Fair enough. Fair enough. How 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 do you like him when you compare him to an Amumu? Amumu at high level is interesting. Amumu has to be played very carefully in high level as a jungler in order to be effective. He's he is not to interrupt you, but I'm going to anyways. He is so vulnerable to counter jungling that it's sickening. And that's true for a lot of champ, a lot of junglers. Uh, Mundo is is kind of particularly the, the tank boat. junglers. Well, no, Mundo right. is an excellent counter jungler. He is excellent at counter jungling. His speed. Correct. He is very vulnerable to counter jungling, but you should be the one doing the counter jungling to prevent that. Like, his speed is just off the charts. Right, right. Oh, uh, We are having a dragon conversion here, so we'll see some action. We are. Likely. I mean, this is a late dragon timing. Normally, you're going to see that between the 10 to 12 minute mark. We're getting towards 14 now. Neither team has really pulled it down yet. There's so many pings going on <laughs> all over the place. Everybody's just trying to coordinate in this uh, featured game. Obviously, they are not a full pre-made, or they'd be on TS, and there would be so many freaking pings, pings from red team. Red team just straight up focusing it with four people. It looks like it's going to be uncontested. Yeah, that's a surprising uncontested dragon. There's uh, really no wards going on in that general area. Uh, the purple team has been doing a really good job. The John has been doing a really good job getting those vision wards down and taking uh, taking out those wards. And, oh, Blitzcrank is just having a rough time. He has not oh! been able to hit any of those grabs, I don't think. Oh, right there on the tower, Finger too. Tips. I thought he was going to get that clutch grab you off your own tower. And no, he has been having a rough game. And... Oh, that sucks. I mean, if you weren't effective up until level 10 or so in the laning phase with Blitz, he really kind of falls off in his usefulness once you get into late game. I don't oh, know. Nautilus with the clutch dredge line. The, oh, gosh. I missed it. Nautilus went straight in. Oh, he got the... But he didn't get the kill. He didn't get the kill. No, Graves no. had to flash away. Graves One had... of the beautiful things about Graves, Graves would have probably been in a little more trouble, but uh, he was able to use his... Uh, Lee Sin getting dash. killed in the top lane. I'm sorry I didn't commentate that. Jax actually got the kill on Lee Sin. Nocturne was actually effective that time in taking down Lee Sin. It was quite nice for him. Well, it's he got there at the right time, it looked like. Yeah. Jax <laughs> jumping over the wall, shut down. Nocturne getting a little bit far farm back after all those deaths early game. Well, and here I feel like it's one of the really clutch parts of the game. It's right about 15 minutes in. Even though uh, Purple Team has been really dominating this game, a few bad decisions, and, um, you know, our boys might be able to come from behind here. It, it's certainly not unheard of. It, it wouldn't even be hard, provided that, once again, they just have to make a few bad decisions. You're right. The game is very, very important. Blitzcrank, oh, jeez. He's just not... He, he, seems, uh, he seems a little... Uh, Flustered. He's missed those couple of uh, grabs originally. He hasn't been able to like really control the lane he, the way he's wanted to. So. Not, not to mention, Ezreal is one of the uh, carries that you that you least want to be up against as a Blitzcrank in this lane. Slippery, slippery. He's so slippery, especially since he's specced with Flash, of course. I mean, you can just you can just pop out of any situation. You can grab and pop him up, but you might not even be able to get your ult on him if his timing's good and he's smashing um, either of his escapes. Oh, getting the Jana pull there though, and she immediately flashes away. Just further nice frustrating flash. this hot rod blitz crank. Looks like Nautilus was ready for that one though. He's God, this man is in the right place at the right time all the time, anticipating that grab and just waiting to move in and clean up on a mistake. Yeah, it doesn't absolutely. even have to be a mistake. He just puts himself in the right position at the right time, pretty much every time to capitalize on uh, not even mistakes, just people not being in the safest of positions. 
Fair enough. We saw Nocturne down here in the bottom lane. He went sneaky, sneaky route and went through the uh, uh, through the bushes there. Unable to really make anything happen, though, in terms of a gank. It's because both Ez and Chana went home. Kind of despoiled his plans. Yeah, that will do it. And then not now Nautilus is in the middle lane. Things have kind of quieted down just a little bit. I think we're due for a big old team fight any moment now, though. You think so? All right. I hope so. Lots of pinging in the jungle for Red. So it looks like they're going to pull back. Nautilus taking down the race. Going to share that red with somebody, probably. We'll yeah, it looks like he's going to give it to uh, Mr. Free Win over there. Free Win Lee Sin, not a bad idea. Always good to have some true damage on board. All right. Just let's, a slow. Yeah, well, let's, let's talk about... Um, Let's talk about uh, CS right now. Is anybody pulling ahead in farm? Is anybody falling behind? What, what do you think? Well, looking at it right here, it looks actually pretty even. Graves is a little farther ahead of Ezreal. Um, Lee Sin is a little bit ahead of Jax, probably about 30. Oh, and Lee Sin is really uh, taking it to Jax right now, though. Jax forced to blow the... F oh, wow. Forced to blow the flash there. But the ward, that clutch ward on the other side of the wall allowed him to kick over. But um, Jax was able to escape. He can be Jump very... To his own ward. To his own ward, yeah, that's what I was talking Good about. Good old ward jumping. Oh, did, did he glad place that they, ward during that altercation? That what was I saying? I, said, I was saying that Lee Sin is just a little bit ahead of Jax. It's actually about 40 ahead, so that's really going to be on. They cross, they cross past? Oh, nope. Just a, just hanging out. No, well, no fight yet. Well, not just yet. the CS, but also plenty of kills. Ja Jax is, is pretty far behind, but if, if they can play it safe, farm up a little bit, catch up in items, even though they're behind in kills, a little behind in CS, they're about 4k gold behind as a team, um, it's still not an insurmountable obstacle at this point. Ooh, Lee Sin is in, he's in the danger zone and then he's, he's looks like he's finally gonna back out. We have some action, action right here. Oh, sneaky. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky. Lee Sin, red buff. Jax getting focused down first. The shark going off on Jax. If Jax gets bursted down too fast, this fight will not turn out favorably, but look at that Nocturne. Darkness to finish things up. Jax got the kill on Lee Sin. Lee Sin got the kill on Jax, but then Zeroth came in with that clutch damage in the end to finish off that Fizz. Absolutely. Rough, rough situation there. So, uh, two for one. Um, I don't know. I think maybe Lee Sin and Fizz probably should not have been trying to force that fight. I think they thought... You know, maybe a little overconfidence there. You think you have... Oh, Ezreal! Ooh. He got it! Blitzcrank, I wasn't even going to commentate it because I thought Ezreal was going to slip away again. But but, <laughs> but Graves actually got the kill off on Ezreal as, 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 the, as the exhaust yielded just that extra little bit of slow that allowed Graves to secure that kill bottom. Blitzcrank has got to be like, have a sigh of relief there, finally yielding something out of all those grabs. He got one. Now, now they can't make fun of him in the uh, in the end game lobby and say he never hit any. <laughs> well, he's been on tilt sort of since the beginning, and you know sometimes just being able to make a couple of good grabs will put you back in the right mindset, take you off of tilt, and uh, allow you to recuperate. That is true. Tilt is a real thing. It is. We know we're poker players, professional ones. Okay, maybe not professional, but definitely poker. All right. <laughs> so in terms of money, things are evening up pretty nicely now. 8 to 10 well, right now on kills. Only uh, less than 2k behind is the uh, is the blue team. So really, they're doing pretty decently. Now well, we're going to see a dragon here from red, though. Go ahead, KOT. Like I was saying earlier, you know, that 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 overconfidence from the Fizz and Lee Sin in the jungle there, uh, you know, that kill on Ez, just a couple little mistakes, and things are basically a dead heat now. One to one on towers, uh, almost even on kills, almost even on money. I mean, there's a, that's a nice ward placement uh, by Blitzcrank there. He's, does he see it with his oracle? He doesn't even see it with his oracle. There he is. He finally does see it. And there's the grab. The grab the out of the dragon oh. area. <laughs> Trying to isolate that Nautilus out of there. Oh, my. This Blitzcrank is bold for sure. This is going to be a weird, awkward engagement if anything happens here. Everybody's kind of scattered. I think blue team, yeah, blue team would be advised to pull back, and they are. Yeah, they, don't, they do not have vision anymore, so they're probably just going to have to give up this dragon again. Ugh. They, they did do a nice job delaying it. They uh, were trying to turn it around, obviously, but at the very least, they were able to delay it. Um, and they can now take the opportunity to put some pressure on other areas of the map. Uh, maybe even go in and clean them up after that dragon kill, though maybe not. Nope. No, it looks like they're just going to give it up completely. Jax has been up there farming. And they just didn't feel confident. With well, with no vision, it was would have been very difficult to kind of try and move in there. Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> I mean, really, the only thing they could have done, given their team comp, is maybe hope for like a 
a, a blitz crank to actually fit, grab the dragon and pull him out of there and steal it. That's about the only steal attempt. Zerath might have been another choice to uh, pull back behind there and just have him uh, spam the dragon. You know, at the mortar, end. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, obviously, and oh, okay, I guess I, me saying the only option, I was. I guess I'm totally wrong. There could have been a darkness into a smite steal too. That's always a pro that's always a possibility. Uh, with no with no vision, a darkness would have been hard to pull off. I suppose you're right. I suppose you know. you're right. It's cool that you can give you can give the false information if you want. I can. I can give false information. <laughs> that's why it's called darkness. You can go into darkness. It's a uh, new patch, new is, meta. Is, oh, is that how that works? Yeah, that's right. Oh, interesting. <laughs> mid there. tower. I thought mid tower was gonna go down. Smart decision to pull back though with Zerath on board. Yeah, you're gonna get bursted yeah, pretty there, heavy. There's no tank in that tower with Zerath right there. Yeah. No, and it's hard to push a tower like that with no creeps, and uh, Zerath is just not gonna let you keep your creeps up, so... just they, they really want to, they want it bad, but like, the darkness... Or with Nocturne and Zerath there, there's just no getting their, those creeps. And this is the kind of situation where I think you just need to back up, don't even try. And don't force this situation because it's going to be a bad situation. Well, yeah, you need to. Well, you need to back up for sure. If you're not going to move in, you need to back up because Blitzcrank's on the other side. He changes the dynamics of these late game fights. Um, it's it's either you go in or you get out. Um, because if Blitzcrank gets one pull, oh, all of a sudden you've options? got an awkward engagement. I get it. Yeah, you don't. You definitely don't want to stand. This is something I find myself doing a lot. Is just you just sit. You didn't get the push on the tower you wanted, but you just sit there. Like, oh, we didn't get it, we'll just sit here until maybe it does work, or until the team type fight starts and we die. Yeah, that's a good idea. Don't do that, go do something else. That's a good point, I'm guilty of that myself. Like, oh, I'm gonna spam my AoE move a little bit. Oh, I got a couple creep kills. Like, you're just wasting all your time. Go farm your jungle, go counter jungle, do something productive. They're, all right. they're turning it around here, blue team is, and they're, they're just gonna take the tower, and that's just the way it is. Uh, not much that Purple could have really done in that situation. So now they're going to move, they're going to probably take that top tower. Yes they are, but they but have they red can team hot on their heels. This, this could be an opportunity for red, no. They're you turning you either take the mid or you uh, you counter around in, their, in your own jungle. Yeah, it looks like that's what they were trying to do. They thought red was going to be chasing after them, but that was not the case. Now they're going to try to pincer in the red team between their entire five man and the tower. Let's see how this goes down. Oh, it's a cluster right now. It's a cluster as Jax is chasing down Ezreal. Ezreal pretty much out of the fight, unable to do any damage. However, Lee Sin did kill Jax immediately. Jax sort of overextended there, jumping into a group of four people. There was a clutch ultimate there from Janna, which essentially saved Fizz. Now blue team, oh wow, double kill instantly from that Graves. Wow, Blue's able to pull things around in the end. And let's see if Blitzcrank can get a clutch grab here so Graves can do some more cleanup. Yeah. Uh I gotta say, I think Jaina has been, or Jana has been a little slow on the ultimate this time. I think an earlier ultimate would have been much better. Uh, Jax did a, did a decent job pushing Ezreal out. He, uh, you know, doing that carry hunter role, pushing him out, but it wasn't enough to finish him off, and he put himself in a bad situation. Got killed by Lee Sin, and oh, we all know what happened after that. Yes, indeed. Things still pretty even right now. Blue's, Blue is pulling ahead a little bit in towers, starting to make up that gold difference. There goes top tower. All three first tier towers are uh, down for the red team. So, well, there goes mid tower. So things are getting evened up. Oh, and there's Ezreal slipping out like a slippery snake. I gotta say, I remember when Ezreal first came out, and we were I was calling OP and map hacks all over that because Ezreal's just able to flash all over the place and just do a ridiculous amount of damage. Well, and if you remember, his W uh, also like healed. In yes. addition to it, like every right. other thing it did. Heals allies, damages enemies, like global <laughs> stun involved too on a passive <laughs> cooldown. Like it was retarded. Uh, but uh, th things are things are a bit more balanced with him. It's fun to yeah, watch he, this game not evolve though. Yeah, he's not very... Uh, apparently he's extremely popular in China. He's not super popular uh, over here in, or in Europe right now. But I don't know. That's interesting if true, I think. I'm not really sure about that. That's just what I've heard. Interesting. Okay, fair enough. There are kajillions of players around the world. The only ones I care about, of course, are the ones uh, in my hemisphere. All the other ones are inferior. Yeah, clearly. That's, that, that's totally like Europe is totally worse than us because we totally aren't using the meta that we took from them two years ago. USA number one, shut up. <laughs> since when? USA. Since when is anybody else in the world better than us in esports? <laughs> Korea, <laughs> Europe, everywhere else. <laughs> All right. So anyway, enough smack talk about America. You saw how how clever that smack talk was. Not very. So everybody's gathering up in the middle lane. It was as high quality as our play. It is. It is. It's about that high quality. All right. So there's a bit of a lonely action. We're jibber jabbering here. My question, folks, 
how is this next major team fight engagement going to occur? Who who would be most advised uh, to? Uh, well, I guess what is the optimal engage for the red team? Is it a Lee Sin kick in with a Nautilus follow up? It's a Nautilus. It's a Nautilus uh, kick in. It's Nautilus alt alt engraves or a Nautilus dredge line. All right. Fair well, I think it's. I think it's a Nautilus followed by a shark. I think. Uh, a oh, shark Nautilus is also an excellent choice. Or a shark it, followed by a Nautilus. Nautilus needs correct. to get in there and be disruptive. Exactly. And if you can chain them both, then that'll be a great engage. It'll really just depend. Oh, it's a bad uh, spot for Jax right there. It sure really is. Really bad spot. Now that he's up against this tower, will he survive? Wow, just getting out. He's, like, just he's getting kind of tanky though, so he's doing all right. Yeah, yeah, he is getting kind of tanky. Getting a little fed. Does have his Hextech gun blade. He's doing okay there. He got his Merc treads. I don't know. He's all right in terms of. Uh, well, is this going to be a slash taunt of the Baron right now? I'm wondering. Obviously, Red Team was not going in on it. They're kind of warding that up. Just chilling in the woods. This is a bad situation for Red. Because if this Blitzcrank gets along this tree line, he might be able to get a clutch grab and pull an awkward engagement here. That's true. Um, both both Oracles... Are, no, Johnny does not have... Or no, Nautilus has the Oracle. So there are two Oracles. Big team fight. Huge team fight. Huge focus on Ezreal again. Ezreal forced to pull back. Massive AoE on the red team, just dropping all of their health down immediately. Nocturne kills Ezreal. Zeroth kills Nautilus. Graves kills Fizz. Lee Sin does get it. Finally killed. Not finally kills Nocturne. And in the end, that Graves was fairly uncontested along that whole battle. He had to pull. Well, he had to pull back. He was doing a lot of kiting there and a lot of marine-like micro. And because he didn't go down early, because he wasn't taken out at the beginning of the fight, I feel like that really pushed things in the favor of Blue. What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, the Baron kills Jax. Very nice. Um, John is actually she's gonna try for an epic tornado steal. Maybe she wants to. She wants it. Uh, basically, I mean the the red oh, team. Oh, they just. Oh. oh my god, what are they doing? They got the double killed! <laughs> Janna! No, is Janna gonna get a kill here? <laughs> and Blitz gets the kill on Janna. That was freaky. What the hell? Wow. They... they well, they won that team fight. Like, soundly. So they went in for the Baron, because that's what you do. But they're still kind of like lo lo lowish level, not quite up for the Baron, they were really hurt, they didn't really have anyone solid tank it, so it didn't quite turn around, and now the, uh, the red team is going to, or the purple team is going to turn around and try and get the Baron themselves, that is interesting. There's but no blue ward there, but there Nocturne, not. oh, there was, I'm sorry, there was one, not directly at the Baron, but there was one on the side there, so we did know what was up, getting disrupted by Nocturne, delaying this Baron, yeah, red's going to have to pull black. Yeah, the a lot of times with the, the Baron's, Baron's all you have to do is disrupt them, keep them from really getting engaged with it while you, the rest of your team comes back up and uh, usually the enemy team will, will pull away because they know it's a bad situation to be. You don't want to fight the Baron and the enemy team at the same time. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. It is. Blitz warding the dragon. He's got... Um, He's psychic. Even though he doesn't have clairvoyance, he knows what's going to happen in the future. He knows that they're going to get on this Baron. Is this going to be like a clutch clutch grab? There it is. Clutch grab on Nautilus. The last person you really wanted to grab there. And now everybody's coming up the side. People flashing up the clip. Oh my gosh. Hot Rod Blitzcrank thought he just got way overconfident there. He, he grabbed the one guy who didn't have any mobility to get over there. So everyone just oh. jumped afterwards. Oh man, that was gross. That's like... Unfortunate. Grabbing him is like grabbing Alistar. Oh, gross. And there's nothing like a nice grab an Alistar right into the middle of your team. He pops everybody up. <laughs> Alistar was like, thanks. Thanks for the free ride to, to the double. You, you just saved me a flash, because that's exactly what I was about to do. <laughs> Alistar's right. not trapped with you. You're trapped with Alistar. <laughs> yeah. Red team oh, taking they're bait, out both They're baiting at the Baron. They, yeah. want, they want it. They want it. They want actually, they want the fight. Oh, that... Oh, Graves needs to back up. Does not need to... Uh... Yeah. Does not need to get engaged upon... Yeah, that was yucky. That Graves does not need to be the leading man out front. Is this Graves farmed enough for this blue team right now? 242, I mean, he is he is leading the game right now. It, he's well, very I think he's very farmed right now. He's just... Look at his items. He's sitting on an Infinity Edge and a Phantom Dancer. That's basically your core build. Uh, you know, I suspect he'll probably get some, some survivability next against this team. Uh, maybe a... Uh, uh, he's got some nice steel. I expect him to just straight up drop a bloodthirster on yeah. that bad boy. He's probably going to go thirster. I've seen some people just sell a Doran's Blade at this point if they're having trouble with tanks, though, and grab a Last Whisper. I think it just depends on how these team fights are shaking out. Yeah, I think he's doing just fine as long as he can stay in the back and be protected. He's he's a game winner right now, looking at him. Oh, absolutely. If 
if the purple team can take out Graves, then they'll win the rest of the team fight. That's sort of the bottom line at this point. And that's one thing that um, that Jax has been doing very well for this blue team in these team fights. Jax is just going balls deep into the middle of their team and just going after Ezreal. Just it, so that Ezreal can't do a lick of damage to Graves. And it's been a really good, it's been a really nice disruptor. And it has really confused the red team a lot and allowed Graves just to essentially free auto attack everyone. Yeah, it does seem that the purple team is uh, falling apart in the team, but here we go with Nautilus, though, and he just jumps away. <laughs> I'm Jax, I jumped away. You know, one thing uh, that I I'm seeing kind of trending right now, along with Blitzcrank, oh, the clutch grab there from, well, it's Lee Sin, so whatever. Might as well grab Mundo, but um, <laughs> the one thing that's trending right now, bans on Jax and bans on Blitzcrank. Oh yeah, those are trending hard. I'm always banning Blitzcrank. You know, know, he just makes the game no fun to me. <laughs> I, I like it because I like playing him, but... Oh, another, trying to get another grab on Lee Sin. Yeah, good luck with that. And uh, what he needs to grab is anybody but Lee Sin and Nautilus right now. And this is just sort of a tense situation. Red needs to just pull back. They need to stay away from that robot. Yeah, you don't want to. They are, uh, red, uh, they had this game firmly for a little bit, but uh, Blue has been outperforming them in the team fights. As you see, the gold is now basically even, 45 to 44, and Blue is now ahead in uh, kills. And this next team fight it could easily determine the game, I think. All right, we're going to have another good old-fashioned tower standoff here. How is it going to start? I don't know. Will Blitz no, get a grab? No, they're just going to take Blue's just going to take it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I guess Graves can just oh, marine, no. marine micro that. Oh, no, there is the ultimate there. on Zerath, and uh, unfortunately, it was the right idea, just just a little late, and his team didn't quite wasn't quite there to follow up. There was kind of a split by the blue team. It so. seemed like sort of a lack of commit from the red team there. That that was an opportunity to move in, and they just they just decided that that just wasn't the right spot. They've lost a couple of team fights. They're not as confident anymore, and they're not willing to commit. It would seem. There's the fish. There's the fish. There's the shark. Uh oh, it didn't really work though. Still, still that lack no of commitment. That lack of commitment. Yeah, I mean, you lose a couple of team fights and you really start to uh, fall behind. Uh, what do you? Uh oh, basically, look at Blitz. Blitz is getting into clutch grabbing situations here. Uh oh. Oh, he got warded. Nice there's also there a rough Jana. situation. If you look at Nautilus and Jana, eleven and twelve compared to the Blitzcrank is fourteen and then the rest sixteen. So that has been uh, the big problem there. They've been too grouped up. They haven't been successful in the team fights. They haven't been uh, leveling. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, oh, mid tower is down. Is Red gonna close in right now? Nocturne up front. Nocturne needs to be very careful. Fizz just straight up jumping the bones of Jax. Jax is still alive though, and they do get the kill. Zareth gets the kill on Fizz. Now we see a big fight on the other side of things. Clutch flash there from Zareth to save his own life. The ignite hasn't taken him down yet. Jax, fin Jax and Zareth finish off uh, Nautilus as well. Lee Sin goes down by the hands of Graves, and now Graves is just moving out front and just. Uh, that, that was a really nice move by Nocturne. You saw how Nocturne pushed away that Ezreal during that team fight. Yeah, and that, that's what they've been done, doing. They've been shutting down the other team's carry, and now they're going to try and get this uh, Baron. Maybe the Baron can get another double kill on Jax Zerath here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I think the Baron might be the MVP of this match. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, yeah. The Baron has the most kills. Very nice. <laughs> might even he, I think at this point he's got the best KD ratio. <laughs> he's got the best uh, yeah. KD ratio. <laughs> Tra -la 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 -la. Oh, not anymore. There's the Baron buff. Blitz pulled out in time, so they didn't see the reveal on the Baron buff. But I, I think, think Baron noobed that. He could have won that, no problem. He did. Noob Baron. I'm gonna I'm gonna report Baron for unskilled player and all that <laughs> stuff from map hacks. So, all right. Blitzcrank headed to the bottom lane, and now this blue team. I guess is it is it sh it's shopping time. It's re up time, and maybe it's push up the gut FTW time. Um, up the gut probably. is hard. Up the gut is a hard move to make. Uh, you know, both of these teams are kind of difficult to engage on, really just full out if, if you want to go balls to the wall. They both have some, some, you know, just a lot of moves that can really disrupt things. You don't really want to be in close to anybody. So I think probably now they go, they shop, they group up, they clear their jungle, they clear the enemy team's jungle, jungle they take the bottom and top outer towers here, and then they, uh, they move from there and they see where they are. Fair enough. All right. really, Blitzcrank needs to, you ward up the map, map, you ward up their jungle, and you just take control. Because you are in control, and you just hold, take control. You're in control, you just hold it. Don't make it, don't get overconfident, though, but... 
Well, I mean, looking at the warding situation, Blue has a completely inferior uh, presence on the map. They only have two counter jungle wards on their side. Um, it's it's hard to say right there. So um, I think their wards are in a decent spot. They have the uh, oracles, and they're just gonna try to move up the gut. Actually, I guess they don't care. They're like, we got Baron buff. Let's go all in. That Lee Sin got bursted down pretty decently at the beginning of that fight. Fizz forced to pull back. Blitzcrank with the clutch grab on Fizz now. Now the blue team will be able to press their luck and probably press in and grab this inhib. That grab right there enabled this entire push right here. Yeah, I mean, I guess we were wrong. Let's push right up the gut with the Baron buff. Um, an underleveled Janna and an underleveled uh, Nautilus. What are they going to do about it? I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Super fed graves. And Zareth is hurting so much. Being able to bottle. Oh, the pull right there from Janna. Oh, that was the guarant that that basically sealed the GG. Oh boy. GG. No uh, re. It's gonna be no re, my friends. It's gonna be no re. Alright, there goes the Nexus. Alright, we aren't gonna go to the score screen on that one. Multiple pulls there at the end. We aren't gonna go to the score screen, but um, what I'd like to do is ask you guys, uh, first MBD, what do you think were the uh, top two factors in this match? Uh, what, what do you think were the two clutch factors, reason why Blue won this thing? Oh, just superior team fighting, superior control, of the actual fight. You had Jax pushing the carry out of the way. You had uh, Zarath doing a great job of staying in the back and doing his turret thing. And, and and just the Blitzcrank and the Nocturne protecting the Graves. That's clutch. Look at that. 8-1 Graves. Protect the Graves. 2-0 and Ezreal. Or 0-2 and Ezreal. I mean, 80 carries are so vitally important. Fair enough. Alright, KOT. What are your top two factors of the match? Well, I'm, I'm going to basically agree with MBD here. They were really able to control the team fights. Actually, I, I want to go back. I want to say probably the biggest factor was that mid-game, about 15-minute mark, the overconfidence. Purple team got overconfident and lost their lead. And uh, they lost their lead. They lost their momentum. And from that point, uh, it was ba basically trivial for blue team to turn it around. So I think that between the superior team fighting skills and uh, the, the mid-game mistakes allowing the blue team to catch back up, uh, I really think that's what lost the purple team this game. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I think that it's pretty good analysis. You're right, the lack of confidence from the red team late game, there was a couple situations where they, they, they could have made it happen and they just weren't, didn't work confident. Same thing with the blue team this game, though. So I guess, I guess it's, it's really hard to give someone advice of be confident and move in when you know you're in the right spot, but if, if you've been failing over and over in a game, I mean, what do you tell a player like that who's been demoralized? How do you get yourself well, out of that position of I, I've been defeated every team fight? How do you pull out of that? There's I really only one thing you can, you can tell them. Get better, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Top left-hand corner, we've got a link to our League of Legends playlist. Top right-hand corner, we've got a link to our channel. We're pumping out a good four to four to seven League of Legends casts every week on our channel. So watch them, subscribe. If you're watching this on the TGN League of Legends channel, you better subscribe to that channel, sucka. On behalf of myself, AWOL, MBD, KOT, thanks for casting with me, guys. And we'll see you in our next cast. T. W.